Hello folks, hi, hi, welcome, hello. Have you got sound now? Can you hear me? It's been, uh, I've been sat listening to you chatting, well, reading you chatting, so. Welcome to this uh, uh, watercolour demo live <clears throat> on my YouTube channel. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please hit subscribe and, and hit the notification bell. I'd love you to do that because it means we can, uh, we can keep, um, keep producing more more content the more people subscribe to youtube the more content i'll do so make sure you if you've not already before we start painting make sure you hit subscribe please please uh, and welcome to this uh, this live demo from wherever you are in the world and um let me know if i've got sound please because this is live if you're watching this back this is originally being broadcast live on the uh, 12th of june 2020 during lockdown so Everybody sat watching. So today is all about painting animals, not literally, but painting a portrait of an animal. And it's going to be a tiger. We're going to paint a tiger in watercolours. And yes, we do have a live model of a tiger right there, sat very patiently, which I'm going to paint live. It's a good job you can't see this tiger, let me tell you. I've got it all sketched in here, folks. I just want to quickly mention, um, I've been doing loads and loads of live stuff over the past uh, over the past uh, 12 weeks I would say something like that roughly and um, a big portion of these have been live um, live workshops today's a demo today's all about me painting a picture at my speed let's say so if you're trying to paint along it's not the ideal situation this is a demo for you to watch with a coffee and chill out and enjoy now, if you want to paint along, you want to get yourself in one of these virtual workshops, and this is the next one. It's on Sunday, the 14th, 10 a.m. UK time till 2 p.m. Now, the thing is, it doesn't matter if that time doesn't fit in with your part of the world because one of the big things about these virtual workshops is that you can actually uh, watch them back at any time. You, you keep the workshop for you to have, as long as it is, the internet is a thing, you will have this to enjoy and and paint along with and it's a workshop that gives you time to work now i know that lots of you watching this demo have taken part in the uh, virtual workshop so if you have please do you know just tell people in the chat that, that you've enjoyed them maybe if you've not enjoyed them tell them that as well preferably not but if you want to get yourself booked in, I do have like a handful of spaces left for this workshop and I want to show you a few examples of paintings that we've done on some of these virtual workshops. I've got a few here actually. So a few weeks ago, because we're talking animals today, we did this uh, African safari scene here which was a very popular picture and it was all done with very minimal sketching and it was all, all painted live, um, giving you bags of time to work. Today's not about that, today's a demo, so it's me whizzing through. So that was a few weeks ago, and then we did this, uh, we did a windmill uh, recently as well. There's the windmill here, which was a lovely detail picture. Again, almost zero sketching on these. Um, one of my personal favourites was this one. This was the uh, Moonlit Night in Venice. Everybody painted these pictures along with me um, live or after the event, because remember you can watch these back. And if you are interested in booking on one of these workshops, head on down to the description because you'll see the link is there. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we did a scene of Lake Garda or, or sort of um, Lake Como, like the Italian lakes. Again, there was no sketching on that one. And then last week's virtual workshop on the animal theme-ish <laughs> was this uh, butterfly on Budlier. And I reckon lots of you did that one. And uh, here is the picture we did. So if you fancy having a go folks, the subject that we're doing on um, Sunday is, it's a local scene to me actually, it's based in the Peak District in Derbyshire which is kind of where I live ish, I live close to the Peak District and it's based on an old Victorian um, uh, park gardens okay with uh, cherry blossom trees overhanging of a footpath with flowers and the old Victorian street lamps and that's the subject for this workshop. It's only £10. You can book them on this website here, Watercolour TV. Head on over to that folks, um, please, and get yourself booked in. It's it's keeping me painting, it's keeping me teaching, teaching is what I like to do. So have a little think about that. If I just quickly show you this, um, this is all the previous workshops that we've done. 
okay right from at the top there we've got the bluebell ward the seascape the paris sunrise we've got the cottage the moonlit night the beautiful waterfall and um, the sunset on the right in the center that was the first one that we did you can see on the left is the one of the african safari and then of course the butterfly etc these are all available uh, to purchase for a bit of a limited time i keep saying this but if anyone wants to buy any of these because they miss them you can buy the workshop and you can and you get the link sent to you and um, i'll pop the um link actually in the in the chat so if anyone's interested in buying any previous workshops um you can get them for a little bit of a uh, little bit of a limited time okay so let me pop the link in for you if you're watching this back at a later stage folks i'm i'm doing all this live so there we go so that's that one there can't go wrong so let's have a little look at the sketch for this picture today So that was the sketch I was just showing you there, folks, and uh, it is ready for, it's all sketched in on a sheet of uh, watercolour paper. And um, let me make it so you can see it. You can possibly see it on here as well. It's all kind of sketched in. It's quite a detailed sketch, if I'm being honest. Um, so it's there for you. Let me shrink it down so you can see it on the actual screen as well because it's a little bit a little bit awkward to see it okay let me try and get it the right kind of size for you because i'm sure that some of you will, will want to have a go at this at some point there we go so there's the sketch for you so if you want to have a go at this you can sketch it in i've i've darkened it people often ask me what pencil i use for sketching well it's the first one i pick up okay this is it's as simple as that you know so it's it it really is um as, as naive and as simple as that okay um and i've put about a good half an hour or so into the sketch i mean there's plenty of photographs of of tigers out there obviously for reference if you do copy anybody's pictures you need to get permission as far as copying my pictures i've got no issue with that if you exhibit them or you sell them or you put them on Facebook, you just need to give me a reference. You just need to say, based on an original painting by Matthew Palmer, that kind of thing. So, all right, that, enough waffle. Just to, just to let you know, we have had quite a few bookings just come through for the um, for this workshop here. So if you do want to get in, I'm down to a handful of spots for this and it's on Sunday. Remember, you don't have to watch it live because I imagine 10 a.m. UK time is quite early or late for some people, obviously, around the world. So you can always watch them back at a later stage. Get yourself in, folks. You will have a great time. And it's remember, it's the cherry blossom picture, okay? Let's get stuck into this picture then. Let's have a look at the palette. First of all, let's talk about the colours I'm going to use for this tiger. So I've got my palette here. These palettes are available. All the materials are available to buy on Watercolour TV. So if you do... Um, want to get yourself any of these materials any of the paints because these are quite special paints we'll talk about them or the palette um even the brushes and yes we do actually have stock back after all this chaos of lockdown of these branching detail brushes i know lots of people have been asking about these well these are back in stock now so you can get all of those these are the super fine tipped brushes not a huge amount of colors for the tiger to be honest um i've got my own range of natural colors i want to be using these because very popular paints and I know lots of you are going to have these you can see Matthew Palmer collection there natural orange is going to be a very important color yes you can mix an orange of course you can but this is a bit more vibrant of course so natural orange we're going to use lots of that there it is uh, we've also got natural yellow now there's a couple of different yellows this particular one it's a sandstone kind of color so you could use yellow roca raw sienna's that kind of thing but here I've got this color called natural yellow which I'm going to pop down in the palette there it is natural yellow it's like a it's great for doing like sort of stone walls that kind of thing so a really nice one to uh, uh, to enjoy okay natural yellow uh, natural gray 
is an essential one. It's not Payne's Grey, folks. Never get it mixed up with Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is basically like using black. So if you look here, this is natural grey, which is like a sort of cold grey, where this is Payne's Grey, which is too black. And you can see that this one jumps off too much. It's too loud. Um, it's mixed from primary colours. And if you do all these workshops here, these virtual workshops, um, we don't use these colours, we just use three primary colours, that's all you need. Three colours and three brushes for this workshop, okay? But we've got natural grey, I'm going to use it for this demo. Because like I say, a demo, I've not got to be too uh, concerned about giving you time to work along because this is me painting for enjoyment and I thought I'd invite you along. That's the gist behind these things. We've also got some skin tone here, we've got dark skin tone. Dark skin tone is going to be a wonderful colour to use. Um, Again, available online. We've also got light, light skin tone as well. So skin tone light and skin tone dark, they're going to feature. And then a little bit later, maybe, possibly, we'll bring some white into play. So any kind of white, gouache, goulash, if you want to call it that, um, which is a lovely tasting tube of paint, if I'm being honest. Uh, but some kind of white paint would be super. That's my colours. We'll talk more about colour mixing as we go through the actual painting. Um, this will probably last about 90 minutes ish. I don't know. I've got no idea. Just just enjoy it. Just relax. Take your time and enjoy the painting. Let's get up to the picture now, folks, and we can enjoy some watercolour. All right. I'm all sketched in. Let's get close into this, shall we? There's a few examples of my animal portraits around here snow leopard, uh, Jack Russell here, insect, stag, bird over there, just creeping around the corner as a squirrel, can't quite see him. And then of course over there you've got the Kingfisher. There is a demo of this Kingfisher on YouTube as well, so if you want to have a look at that, um, head on over to my YouTube channel, which you're already on at the minute, so make sure you hit subscribe. We're nice and close in, folks, and let's have a little look at splashing a bit of paint. We've had about another three or four people book on this, so if you do want to get in, it's a good time to do it. Okay, right, so let's just, let's just do it, and, and I'll, I'll try and answer questions as much as I can. We've got a couple of moderators on the chat today, so thank you to those two people that are moderating, um, which is Lynn and Darcy, so big thank you for that. Appreciated. They're in charge of the chat, so behave. <laughs> Let's get the biggest brush, which is actually gonna be a 20 brush for this particular picture, and I wanna wet the paper down, all the way down to the bottom, okay? And it's gonna be a nice clean sheet of watercolour paper stuck to a board. It's a big size, it's about A3, quarter imperial. We do sell this paper online on watercolour TV as well. It's a lovely surface to work on folks. I promise you'll enjoy it, okay? Uh, it's cotton, it's a cotton based paper. Big wet into wet background, stuck to a board with masking tape or, or some kind of paper tape is always good. There's another couple of bookings coming for this. I can I can see them coming through. So really, it's just something to enjoy. If you've ever thought, you know, I want to do a bit of painting, all you need is three colours, three brushes for the workshops, and you've pretty much nailed it, folks. I guarantee you'll produce a painting. I'm sure people in the chat will, will back me up on that. So this will be week 12 this Sunday, the 12th virtual workshop, okay? So that's got a nice coverage. Now, as far as background's concerned, I don't want to do a huge amount in the background. Um, I just want to take off the harshness. Now I didn't, I didn't mention greens, but I am because it's my painting. I can do as I like with this, can't I? I want to bring some natural green into play. Now, natural green is my light green. You can mix the green, of course, from yellow and blue. This is more of a lemon yellow based green. I'm going to use a little bit of that, um, and that's going to go in. It's going to go in around the back. I want to twist it in. Very weak. Um, it's basically just creating a soft edge. Always nice on an animal portrait to get a soft edge. So I'm, I'm not going to put any green over of course, over the animal. So I'm going to work that around. Bit of a squiggle. I've got a book coming out in the new year, the winter, um, all about animals and watercolour. So that's something that you can have a, have a think about. Now, as far as the greens are concerned, I've got another green. It's a darker green. Let's get the camera straight there. I'm a bit drunk, there we go. Um, it's a darker green here. So it's it's part of the natural range of greens. Natural green, it's just a darker version, basically. There's, there's green and green light. Again, all these are available online if you're interested in those folks. Uh, I, not a massive amount of colour in the back, just to take off some of the harshness. It's a good idea to do this, I would say. Um, especially as you get close 
to the animal because it you can imagine this thing sort of sat down you know with like a sort of woodland background kind of thing so I'm going to work this in I'm just going to scrub all the paint through and just going to take off harshness it's very weak it's very soft but that's all I want it to be just going to take away some of the solid um, colours there we go also folks head over to my Facebook page please Matthew Palmer Artist that's where you can get all the information about me and you can keep up to date with everything I'm up to Matthew Palmer Artist lovely and plenty of colour around. Super. It's all right, isn't it? Okay, uh, clean brush, and now uh, we're going to bring in some colours, some of the warmer colours. Still working with a big brush. I'm going to go for natural orange. I mean, that's the primary colour for this one. That's the main colour. So I'm going to use a lot of this. It's it's the colour what I use for doing the autumnal stuff. So it's a good, rich, powerful colour. I've got a bit of paper here for testing colours if I need it. It's always useful and it's it's strong you know it's quite a thick mix here on the tissue i'm still using a big brush now removing the excess does actually mean that you can control the amount of paint that goes on on wet paper which is quite an important thing to say um you don't want to be too sort of wet really with it and i've got the tissue in the hand here in case i start crying and i want to work around i want to work around and let the paint flow following the shape and I'll be working this colour for quite a long time here so this will be like watching paint dry <laughs> literally I'm going to work that into the ears there's plenty of this colour this is just a background a good sign of a nice watercolour paper folks is if it stays wet and this is still nice and wet it's starting to get a bit dry in the centre but that's fine it'll all come out in the wash well that looks a dog's dinner don't it or should we say a tiger's dinner? Work it around the eye. Down the centre here, of course, you've got that big band of orange coming through. You've got to stick through to the end on these things, folks, always. So many people, especially beginners, give up. Because look at that thing. Well, that's a bugger. That looks shocking. Call yourself a professional. And work this around. And I think that people that have done the workshops know this. They know that you've got to... You've got to stick with it, you really have. I like putting war paint on at this point. Bring it down and then bring it into the face. That's nice, it sweeps down. All this will get softened in, like I said, very soon. And then we're going to bring a bit of orange down the back here as well. Sweeping over. Another piece coming down. Now I want to clean my brush. That looks great, don't it? Clean my brush really well. And I'm going to use it almost dry and I'm going to blend all this in to the background. Make it all become part of the painting. It'll grow on you. Anticipation's off the fun. And because I'm doing a portrait style, I want it all to fade in to the edges. So I'm sort of using this brush it's quite a big brush to be fair and I'm using it quite definitely and I'm I'm sort of really smoothing the paint in at this point make sure it's soft around those eyes that's a lovely area because there's a nice band of white comes in around there so we want to keep that in play now if anyone's got my blending blades um, that would be nice to use on here you can almost pinch your brush flat as well and make sure that everything's smooth Yellows and oranges are going to be very easy colours to blend, folks. You don't have to worry about them being a staining colour. It depends what yellow it is, obviously, but this colour is based on like a burnt sienna and yellow mix, this one here. Nice. So the paper is still slightly damp, and what I'm, I'm interested in is, is these areas being softened in. And I'm actually going to pick up a smaller brush of 10. I'm going to get a little bit closer in here as well now because I've got a good base on there. Still using the same colour. I'm going to go stronger with the paint. So I'm working a little bit more precise around that nose area and just basically laying down richer colours at this point, okay? And I'm going to work this back 
So it's just a smaller brush. This one's a 10 brush I'm using here. And again, making sure everything nicely blends around those eyes. So I'm manipulating the paint here, leaving the white areas where I think they should be, which I think is fine around that area. Over this side as well. I'll take a little bit of the white away from that area. So bring a little bit more orange down here. Notice I'm trying to follow the contour the shapes, clean brush and just give it a few taps on tissue, it's always good to do that. I want to make sure that these lines are softening in, becoming part of that background. And very shortly we're going to make this colour a little bit darker. There we go, so that's all, I'm pretty happy how that's all blended in so far, very much, very much a starting point. Now let's get a bit closer into the face there because I'm going to add some other colours to the mix. What we're going to do here is I'm going to bring in some of this dark skin in with the orange. So it's dark skin and natural orange together, which is lovely. And that is going to give us a darkness. Now just a touch of grey would also go into that. Or blue if you've not got um, grey. So a deeper, more towards a brown. But... The skin tones are quite um, opaque colours, so they do actually sit in quite nicely. If you've not got skin tones, you could use some browns and various things like that. So, starting to bring a little bit of darkness into a few areas at this point, yeah? So, I want to come down, down here with some darkness, down the side of the nose there. Rest on the paper, it's kind of starting to dry now. I want to be a little bit cautious around the top of the nose there. So, I'm kind of painting a bit of an L shape in there. Bring that over. I want to bring that down here. So I'm just putting a few patchy areas of darkness and then I'll start to soften these in. I also want to bring some of that darkness coming down from the eye, sweeping around there as well. So we get that, that kind of darker side to it, a bit of a line here would be nice. That's the top of the ears. And a few little bits of darkness coming down here as well. So again, it's still very naive, very patchy, clean brush on the tissue. Let's work all this in. Work it around the eye again. Work it into these areas. You can see that nice darkness across the sort of top of the nose there. A little hint of that darkness comes down there as well. Clean brush. Quite easy to work in these paints, these colours. My paper's really wet still. You can see it's kind of gone a little bit cockly at this point, which is, which is absolutely fine. It's interesting because when you see a picture like this, it just looks a complete mess. But when you get towards that end, and it was, it, it, and that's the same for every workshop I've ever taught. People, people give up too soon on paintings. They really do. It's when you get the eyes on the animals when it makes the most sense, and all those gorgeous dark stripes on this tiger is going to be so nice to see a little bit later so stick with us folks there's nothing better on the telly apart from depressing news no doubt a little bit of dark over here and a few little bits coming over the top of the head again quite sort of directional with the brush here clean brush few taps and a bit of a soften Bit of a blend, bit of a soften. There we go. So that's giving me a little bit more shape. Just want to get a slight hint of shape coming around there. I want to sort of make these jowls look a little bit more obvious. Clean brush tissue. Sweep it around. Nice. Okay, I'm happy with that stage. What I need to be doing now, folks, is giving this thing a good thorough drying. And then we're going to start to put in some of the features on this, some of the darkness, some of the nose, mouth, etc. And get some of those all-important shadows. There's just one thing I want to do, actually, before it does actually dry. 
and I just want to get a slight little bit because it's it, it's borderline dry so I'm just going to pop a little bit of extra shadow um, on the tops of these ears because I want to get the shape of them now a big portion of these ears is actually dark so that will come a little bit later on but I'm just going to use this brownie mix remember this is a mix of dark skin natural orange and a touch of grey but you could just mix a bit of a sort of pale brown if you're using primary colours folks okay so I'm not saying that you're going to be using these colours but remember this is a demo this is not a workshop so I'm just going to use what colours I think works for this it's just it's an enjoyable thing to watch I think sometimes yeah I think that's what we're trying to achieve here a bit of escapism for you and I want to say thank you to those people that have, have got up early and stayed up late to watch this because I noticed in the chat a few people had said they'd been they'd been doing that wonderful yeah look he's alright isn't he he's starting to get a bit of shape to his to his face and things like that so bringing a bit of shape coming down here look and fiddling around this is this dark colour again and then a damp brush I mean that tissue was clean when I started it's now a beautiful sort of camouflagey sort of colour you can actually buy camouflage kitchen paper if you can find it of course paper towel so that colour, orange, dark skin, bit of grey, bit of grey, is a lovely colour for shadows. And underneath the um, sort of mouth area, the sort of bottom chin, we need to get some darks in. I'm going to use this exact same colour to go a little bit darker underneath, okay? So this is an important line. That's starting to dry, okay, which is good. It's not perfectly dry. And I will be using a hairdryer in a second um, to give it a bit of a blast. But what I want to do is I want to work around here with this tem brush. So underneath the mouth, it's all nice and spiky here. Work it around. We do sell all these brushes online as well, folks. So if you like any of the tools we're working with today um, and the colours of the paper, all available on Watercolor TV and of course if you're a member of Watercolor TV um, which is the video on demand see he's got a beautiful beard it's like Tony Stark clean brush on the tissue <laughs> and let's just use a bit of water to get that thing disappearing it's all about the blending folks again if you struggle to blend and I'll say this now blending is probably the hardest technique of all to learn um, just bear in mind that it just comes with practice, you know, but it's important. It's the dabbing on the tissue that makes blending work. And when you blend these areas away, that's when it starts to make the most sense. Okay. So water at this point, blending blades, which we do sell online. I think we're out of stock of them at the minute because um, our manufacturers are having the same problems that we are, obviously. Um, so just bear that in mind. So that's starting to make that look a little bit more obvious down there. There's going to be lots of detail to come in this thing as we progress. It's all about just blocking in the base colours. A few more people booking these um, these workshop folks. So if you want to have a go at doing the beautiful um, Victorian gardens in the Peak District with uh, cherry blossom, that gorgeous pink blossom, and of course the um, the um, street lamp, all the Victorian street lamps, get yourself booked in. It's the best £10, it's cheaper than getting a couple of coffees, is it not? Cheaper than getting a haircut. Let's get some water on this, make sure that all blends away. So that's started to give me some form and we can see that shape loosely starting to appear. Now at this point folks, I do need to give that a dry, okay? So if you look at the paper, you can see it's gone a bit wavy. You can see that sort of wavy sort of feel there. So while that's drying off, you can be entertained uh, by looking at a picture of a tit on a tap, a grey tit on a tap, and a squirrel. There's a squirrel. Just using a hairdryer, folks. Great time to get yourself booked into that workshop. Remember, the link is in the description.
If you got bored with that, I'm going to show you down here. Apologies for the camera work. I'm going to show you a, a, a similar kind of composition. This is a, a snow leopard. This painting is, is on watercolour TV, so watercolour TV members can access the full step-by-step -step workshop of how to do that. There we go, it's nice and dry now folks. There we are, back in business. There we go, we're nice and dry and we can see he's looking all right, isn't it? That point has got the color um, and we're starting to get some shadow coming through. What makes animal uh, portraits is the eyes, nose, mouth and the, the the detail. And if you look on my website, Watercolor TV, you'll see these loads of animal portraits Animals were a thing I kind of started off painting uh, right back in the early days, about 30 years ago when I started, in fact longer, 32 years ago now when I started painting in watercolours. It was animals were the thing I kind of first got into. So, we're going to start to put in some detail. And detail is all about, it's about the darkness, okay? It's the darkness that makes these things work. And if you was to do a quick bit of research and have a look at an image of a, a tiger, you'd see that darkness is obviously a huge feature. Let's, let's kind of, I think that can be retired, that piece of tissue. Can we have a, a silent hush and a moment to say thank you to this piece of kitchen paper? That's going to be lovingly recycled, is it not? Now, the nose is a nice pink colour, and for this I'm going to use a light skin tone. We've used dark skin tone, the light skin tone I'm going to be using. It's like a pinky peachy colour, so you can mix something similar, but it's a beautiful colour as the skin tones, I love these colours. And that's just a very simple colour for adding just a very simple wash over the nose. That's pretty much the only place we're going to be seeing it, so it's not an issue. It's just going to go in very loosely, and that can be left to dry while we work on some other bits of shadow. Now I use the green in the background. If you were to look at a, um, if you, I was going to say, if you look close at a tiger's eye, it's probably a bit dangerous. My live model there is still well behaved over here somewhere, just in that corner. Um, it's like a greeny yellow. So we mentioned uh, natural green here. I want to pop a little bit of this, the light one, but I'm also, and I didn't mention this at the beginning, but I'm going to bring in a very light yellow as well. This one is like a primary colour, so like aureole and something like that, okay? Or cadmium yellow. That's going to go in. So I'm going to sort of alternate between the two. Very pale, okay? And I'm just going to put a very simple little sort of wash of colour on as I do that. So I'm just going to basically just put the yellow in. You'll see these closer a bit later, I'll zoom in for you. Take a little bit of green and just pop a hint of green on there. Just a touch. Now obviously we're going to put shadows and highlights onto these eyes very shortly as well. So I want to bring in these colours. Don't forget the green, it's like a greeny yellow as a starting point. Now I want to zoom in close to this. So we can see. Now, the eyes need a bit of shadow, okay? So a little bit of shadow needs to kick in. And shadow is the grey. Now we mentioned the grey at the beginning. So I want to take some natural grey, relatively strong with the colour, just to very quickly show you the grey that I've actually got here. You can see it there, that's just natural grey. So it's like a, it's 
straight from here. It's mixed from primary colours, okay? It's, it's important not to use Payne's Grey for things like shadows. And I want to pop in a shadow across the top of the eye. That's important because that's the one that would be cast by, let's say, the eyelids, if, if that makes any sense to you. So a little bit of that goes in. And that kind of goes at the top of the eye. And then I'll, I'll just wipe off the excess. I'm just going to soften that down a touch and bring a little piece around the edges just to give some variation. That's just a starting point, folks. And yes, of course, I will be adding some highlights to the eyes as well. And that's always kind of last job sort of thing, all right? So a bit of shadows going in while the background is damp, like so. Nice, okay, so we'll come back to that. If I get the gray very thick on the brush, I could actually bring in the, um, the sort of pupils, which, it's like a slightly oval shape on a tiger, so we can bring that in. I'll soften those in in a second. See the little dark spots? That's just using a thicker paint. In fact, it's almost pure paint. Now, it's nice to do it while it's damp because it softens in a touch. That's why it's a good idea to get those in fairly early. Just want to make sure we're nice and dark across that top edge as well. This is the reason why I would use a nice paper like cotton because it allows me to work a little bit longer. Now remember this is live folks. So if you're watching this back at a later stage on YouTube, um, just ignore all the uh, relations to time frames that I'm talking about. But again, if you do want to get into this, I've not mentioned this yet, have I? But I'm doing a live workshop on Sunday, the 14th of June. Get yourself booked in. Lovely. Um, I will simply leave that to dry and I'll come back to that in a moment. Let's have a look down at the nose area and the mouth come out a little bit there and um, there's darkness around the eyes yes we'll get to that let's use that gray we've just been using natural gray again you can mix it from red yellow and blue if you're into that sort of thing and um, and a fairly strong color is going to go in to the nose down here that should be dry now i would have thought so nice, nice strong bit of shadow colour. Again, if I'd used Payne's Grey, it would have a very different effect on this. It would be too black. So you should always avoid that. It's better to mix your shadow colours. And again, you can just mix it with your red, yellow and blue. So I'm sort of painting inside the nostril. Slightly out to the side. Like so. as you can see and then this comes down comes down here towards the mouth okay all this will get softened in, in a minute all right down towards the mouth working working quite solid and a slightly spiky edge but gradually making that line thinner as it gets to the edge He looks a happy chap. Clean brush on the tissue now, folks, on the tissue. And we're going to soften this down with a bit of water. So I'm dragging the paint down at this point, yeah? So this is a size 6 brush I'm using here. Nice pointy one as well. It's a pretty new brush, this one. So it's got a nice, uh, it's got a nice point on it. There we go, so that nice bit of blending is quite important. Keep refreshing the brush, clean it, dab it on that little bit of tissue as you go through. So it's all, all fresh. And then here, we're going to soften that shadow from the nose. Like so. So I'm working quite sort of precise here, you know, with the water. I'm blending it out. Excellent. Now, you often see, if I pop some water down here, Dampen that area down. 
you often see little little black spots so I put water so the paint spreads you see so little black dots just coming out little grey dots coming out quite strong with the colour and let it spread and we can soften those in if we need to exactly the same thing applies here as well to these these sort of jowls if that's the right word for them I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong one side at a time very thick with the grey and these areas are quite important so these kind of come from a little dot and the dot gradually gets thicker as we go around the corner that's where the whiskers poke out from I'm sure they've got a name I'm just going to call them spots because I don't know I'm not working for National Geographic folks So I'm being quite precise with these. And again, it starts to make that feature look more desirable, yeah? You know, it starts to grow on us, don't it? A couple of little dots around here as well. Making sure it's really quite dark inside those nostrils because natural grey has got a unique property. The darker it is, the more it kind of goes in. Where Payne's grey would have the opposite effect. Okay, clean brush, let's do the opposite side. Is it like watching paint dry? This is how we're doing, folks. Are we looking good? Are we happy? Are we all right? Are we okay? Again, I want to say thank you to the moderators, uh, Sarah, uh, Lynn and Darcy. And hello to patrons. If anyone's a patron of mine, big hello and a big thank you. I can't say how much it means being a, a patron. And also members of Watercolour TV. So if you're a member of Watercolour TV, folks, stick a... Stick a smiley face in the uh, in the chat because it's always good to to see if anybody's a a watercolor TV member. If you're not sure what it is, it's basically it was the I think it was the world's first art video on demand because I was this is 12 years ago this thing was set up. Big update coming soon. I keep saying this, but it's a genuine thing. There's going to be lots of new features uh, on watercolor TV, and it's a good offer. It's a good time to sign up on watercolor TV because price you pay will stick with you when the price goes up on the new version which will be uh, soon so if you want to save yourself a good 20 30 pounds get yourself as a member of Watercolor TV it's th fr if I could talk free for 30 days here's some smiley faces coming I love it thank you loads of stuff I mean there's there's at the minute there's two or three painting lessons added weekly YouTube's probably got about 15 video demos on, on, on my YouTube channel. Well, Watercolor TV has got over 250 um, lessons, exclusive lessons, which are only for Watercolor TV members, of course. Working on this edge, paper's starting to dry at this point, but that's fine. A few little spots around here. So I'm I'm starting to work a little bit on the dry side here as well. Keep nipping back into this area, making sure it's all nice and dark around there. But that's starting to do its thing, which is good. There's a bit of darkness coming down here as well. So I'm basically brushing quite precisely. There's a very thin line of grey also runs nicely along the top edge of the actual flesh part of the nose and then down there as well clean brush let's just take that all the way around clean my brush then and just give it a good few wipes just going to basically soften those lines in a bit there we go I'm making sure that these are blending in and if I use a slightly paler version of the same grey Exactly the same colour, just paler. Pinch my brush so it's a little bit on the spiky side. And then I'm going to use this brush to bring in some some sort of long hairs, if you like, coming down in the in the mouth. So I can brush this around. I can do a few of these, you know, I can sort of bring these anywhere I want, really, with that brush, so I can sort of bring them in. 
working around that area. Takes the white away, brings a bit of texture into it. And when we talk about texture, if you look at this painting that we did on the, the butterfly on the workshop last weekend, if you look close, you can see the gorgeous texture, can't you? On the wings, and all that was done this this way. I've got to say, I'm blown away by the amount of uh, paintings I've seen of this on my Facebook page, Matthew Palmer Artist. Um, so it really is one of those things that's um, just absolutely amazing to see. I loved it. And I do have a good look through all people's paintings. It's it's there's 162 um, paintings appeared after the workshop on uh, on uh, Sunday, so I didn't have a chance to reply to 162. So I did a collective thank you, and this is me saying well done here as well because it was such a nice um, such a nice thing to see. It really was. So I'm just putting a bit more shadow in here, folks, on this mouth area. So I've darkened around there to make that pop out a little bit more. Every little helps, you know, and focal point of an animal, like I say, would be the uh, nose, mouth, eyes um, on the on the big cats. I've painted quite a few big cats, domestic cats as well. In fact, my, my cat Daisy is asleep just over there now. She's fast on in the pouring rain in beautiful Derbyshire. <laughs> is it raining where you are? I think it probably is all over there. At the minute. Nice bit of texture coming in. Lovely. Now, I've got that skin tone still. I'm just going to use a little bit more of that, just to bring a little bit of extra extra colour. It's a very simple little thing. But if you look back, we can see we're starting to get a bit of shape to that now, which is great. Now, make sure that all blends in. Get the water up there so it's all smoothing in. Love the job. And I'm just going to simply pop a few little flicks coming in. Coming from that edge, making sure it's all dark and everything's everything's working well. Now let's look at the eyes, folks. We're going to get close into those, and we're going to bring in some darkness around the eyes. Now that's important. Again, using thick natural grey would be ideal for this. So let's go in and let's not be afraid to do some dark stuff. Okay. So I'm very much so. It's all dry there, and um, I'm going to put a very clean line going around the eyes. This is. This is like as thick as I can get away with without um, obviously being too dry because watercolour needs water. I guess that's why you call it watercolour, yeah? I do paint quite strong in areas and it's just my style, you know, there's no criticism in how people paint. So I'm not a loose painter, I like a little bit of detail and I like to make it easy for people as well. A little bit of dark so that's that nice richness around the eye there now there's quite a big chunk of this darkness I mean it really is a big chunk of dark and it really comes right down down here really spreads out and it starts to go down the side of the towards the mouth area okay now I'm, I'm gonna bring in another bit of darkness here actually there's a lovely bit of darkness just coming in here like a Bit of dark stripe going in there. Now I'll come back to that in a second. I'm going to do the same over this side as well. So your first thing to do is to really make sure, and this is a bit wet down here by the way, so I'm a bit cautious about where I'm leaning, but make sure you get darkness around the eye and it's got to be the right shape, of course. Otherwise it'll be Clarence the Boz eyed line or whatever it was called. I think that was Stanley Holloway or something. Does that sound right? Am I talking nonsense here? The monologues. And then it comes right down. Again, it's lovely and crisp, and it really makes a feature. You can pop a little bit of dark inside the pupil as well if you want to do that at this point. And again, that starts to come down. And around, again, we've got some lovely darkness coming in. And there's actually, if I come back to this side, while I'm, I'm working around this eye, because it's such an important area, we're going to bring in some darkness around here. Little diagonal flakes of strong 
uh, grey. Over here as well. And another bit of darkness coming down there. Now all that's going to get blended in, okay? Leslie's got the monologues on vinyl. My dad used to listen to the monologues. That's why I remember them. I remember them. Stanley on the way in monologues. Now I've got a... Do an internet search, folks. You'll know what I'm talking about. I'm just using a damp brush here. I'm just going to lightly soften. I'm just going to soften the um, colour. Now, this pretty much disappears right down. It kind of fades into that area. So I'm really going to soften these out. Feather in the edge. Feather in the edge. So it's got that nice bit of softness. I mean, that really does make the difference. And the same for these as well. So I'm basically brushing the edge of them. So they're not harsh, solid lines. They're more of a more of a textured area. There we go. Nice. Again, makes a difference. And on this particular piece here, I can really spend a bit of time bringing it down. It it starts to make the actual um, mouth stand forward a bit. If I bring that down here as well. Bit of water on the edge. So that's the great thing about watercolour, it's like never completely dry. You can really spend quite a bit of time uh, sort of blending the paint in, you know. There's some lovely markings coming in around it around here as well. So I'm gonna bring in some of these now. It's rich, rich grey, thick grey. Lovely. And there's like a little stripe one to bring down here as well. I suppose they're all different, I guess. I don't know. Like I say, I don't know. I just enjoy painting. I don't know all the technical ins and outs of these things, but I just, I'd just like to do a painting, you know? Which I'm sure you're the same. No, I'll, I'll pop over this side and do a similar thing. Soften them in. And there's a big chunk of dark comes down there, which is lovely because that starts to make. If I zoom back a bit here, you can see how we're looking, can't you? There we go. Starting to get a little bit of, a little bit of attitude coming through there, look, yeah. So an almost dry brush, again, and I'm just going to spread this colour down, and just pretty much do as I did before, soften, soften the lines, keep cleaning the brush, wiping it dry, and feathering the edges into your picture. Now I've not, I've not paused to look at the chat, folks. So apologies if I've not replied to any questions. I'll, I'll stick around at the end. If anyone's got any questions, you can pop them in the chat. Okay. And it's because I'm working. You know, I'm sort of, I just fancied painting a tiger, so I just thought, well, rather than do it on my own, you can all keep me company. Lovely. Nice, that's good. Um, you know, it starts to make quite a difference. Make sure that's all nice and dark around here again. I can keep going back into them. Also, because I'm using such a strong colour, I know you won't see much of this, but I'm going to go in and make sure it's quite dark in some of these areas, some of these spots here. Get some real, real strength in colour. Um, I'm going to pop a few little stripes coming out from here as well. These are quite random and they're almost done in a slightly dry brush fashion, which means there's not a huge amount of paint on the brush as I'm painting them in. There we go. Excellent. You know, I'll just keep adding a little bit of extra dark because the darker inside there, the more it goes in to your picture. Okay, super. Let's carry on with some of the dark markings now, folks. So again, down here, it starts to come down. And if I show you the colour for a second, I'll I'll just show you the palette. Um, this is the grey I'm using. It's it is very strong. It looks quite blue, but it's like 
proper sort of thick if you look at the the, the brush there you can hopefully see how sort of strong the color is that's an advantage of using natural gray in the tube rather than mixing because it just means that you it's just there for you and it's just used all the time um, on shadows and things like that and animal portraits especially there's lots of lovely shadows and, and of course we're going to continue to add more and more um, shadows and stripes to this picture as long as you get these three bits working and they're starting to that makes the picture okay that's what makes the picture it's the stripes the eyes nose mouth as I said what makes this thing work and you can watercolor you can put the stripes in you can go and have a brew you can come back later and you can soften in at any time it's great bro really nice way of working watercolor and, and it doesn't have to be the hardest medium I don't know who said that the way I teach watercolor it's not the hardest medium and I'm I'm hoping that people agree with me on that one let's bring a little bit Darkness coming around here, a few little spots. Gonna keep adding that little bit of extra darkness. Love these L shapes there, they look lovely. Wonderful. Excellent, okay. So I'm just gonna do a few more. How's it looking folks? Let me know. Is it looking alright? Some really nice strong dark colours starting to come in here down this side. I think I'm going to pop those in. Starts to give a bit more. Let's come back to the whole thing a little bit now so we can see it. There we are. And again, all these go in dead loosely, and then you can just revisit them and soften them in there's a nice sort of dark stripe kind of runs all the way around actually which is effective and again all that, all this will get blended in very soon Nice big dark there and it comes down to almost like a little spot at the end with a little piece following the shape down there. Excellent. Now I want to continue this stripe going up. All that's going to get softened in by the way, okay? So over this side here, there's a nice bit of darkness coming in. Almost going right, right round towards this area. And then it softens in, okay? Now, I wanna revisit all of these areas with a damp brush. And I'm just gonna soften them in now because they look very harsh at this point. So I'm, I'm skimming around all of these areas with a damp brush. So I'll just keep popping it in the water on the tissue basically. And then blending them in. 
these bits at the side are interesting because these start to lead into sort of long long hair so you can almost blend these ones away at the side so I'm actually dragging out of the the dark colour on, on this bit Excellent. And again, I'll just keep going and going at this. So, but it's this that's going to make it. So that lovely darkness that comes down there it really makes that mouth sort of pop out at this point. And I did mention at the beginning, I mentioned using white paint, so, and we shall be bringing white paint into play um, later on, towards the end of this thing, which is always an important, an important thing to do. So I'm just tickling the edge, feathering it a little bit. Good time to look back and see how it's shaping up. Excellent, okay, that's that's uh, made quite a big difference to the picture so far and I want to continue to put stripes around um, elsewhere, okay. I just want to make sure I'm still getting quite a dark colour coming down here into the mouth. Good, okay. So more of the same, more natural grey and in the centre there's quite a lot of nice dark stripes coming down. There's one down here that's going to go in. following that nice curve and of course these dark stripes do start to creep over the brow of the head there so they're going to come over and there's almost a line down the center almost like a, <laughs> I guess a bit of a center parting you could say and these lines do follow that they almost go into a dip and then they pick up on the other side like this. And they start to come down. And they almost disappear into the into the side. Quite a random thing and I guess I don't know for sure but I guess it it's all uh, it's a bit of a sort of fingerprint kind of thing is it when it comes to markings I would guess so so there's almost like a line down the center and then it spills out into these but it's the blending that makes the thing work as we've been saying throughout this this uh, this workshop bits of markings around there as well actually. I'm looking forward to getting some white in those eyes, some some nice highlights that'll that'll happen folks soon so stick with us. There's nothing better to do today is there? Apart from painting the fence again, cut the grass.
again you do start to see a nice sort of chunk of markings that kind of follow that nice curve excellent and again all this will get blended you know that um, as it gets down towards this area we see less and less of these these uh, these, these markings I think this chap would look pretty good on the on a cereal packet, don't you? That would be great. So again, you see that kind of centre line. So I'm kind of very loosely connecting them together. I want to do this. Smaller ones disappear over. Big couple of big ones coming in here, like big chunks. And then as we come down towards the eyes, start to get little smaller lines coming in. There's a lovely bit of white around the eyes and around the mouth on a on the tiger, so we've purposely kept that kept that as it was. Some of the techniques to painting like a domestic cat as well. You know, I've painted a few um, paintings. In fact, one of the first paintings I ever did was of my old um, living at home. You know, when I was a little sprog, painting the family cat. Not literally painting the family cat because I don't want to endorse that kind of stuff. That's just cruel painting a picture of the family cat this is going right back and, and my mum still has those pictures on a wall it is all right you know it was one of the first pictures I ever did so it's obviously you know this is going back 30 odd years now so you know we've improved since then <laughs> and if I could do an auction for those pictures so again folks yeah if you are wanting to get this, just have a quick look. We've literally got like the last couple of spots are available. If it still says this, if it doesn't say fully booked, then this space is for this workshop. And that's the uh, beautiful uh, picture of um, the uh, Victorian gardens with uh, cherry blossom. So a lovely one to work on. I guarantee you'll enjoy doing that one, folks. And um, you will produce a picture. If you work along, you will produce a picture. That is the That's the big thing about the virtual workshops giving you time to work as well on the pictures yourself and I know lots of you that are watching this demo today have been doing the the workshops and it's it's similar techniques what I'm doing here is the snow leopard um, that is on watercolor TV okay Looking straight down the camera, clean brush folks, couple of taps, then I want to go back into these and repeat, rinse and repeat here, softening in because I don't want to see harsh lines, they look too sort of dirty almost, you know, I'm just going to basically feather these lines in and make them look just more calm, less, less spiky I suppose really is what I'm trying to say and I can pretty much just revisit all of these. So I keep watering and look at the tissue and see the grey I've been wiping off and just basically just pottering, pottering around and removing any excess colour. So it's, it's very much been the past sort of 30, 40 minutes on this painting has very much been um, Fifty Shades of Grey. And it's amazing how quick the time's gone on this live demo. You know, I'm looking at the time and I'm totally absorbed in this. And that's what painting does. It's total escapism. So if you're having a bit of stress in your life, you know, painting is a great thing. And all of us are having a few little sort of stressful moments at the minute, I'm sure. So um, watercolour is the most accessible one. And and these workshops proving that because you don't need much. All you need is three colours, three brushes and a sheet of watercolour paper and away you go. 
So you're kind of ready for action, you know? Nice, so I'm, I'm really going in and softening these lines in, taking away any harshness from them. Quite a detailed painting this, it's, it's taking a bit of time, but it's hopefully it's not too uh, too dull to, uh, to watch. Right, okay, now there's plenty of darkness in the ears as well. There's quite a big chunk of dark in these ears actually, and it, and it, it kind of follows an edge. So it kind of comes up here nice and dark. And there's a nice clean line that shoots back. And then down here, I've got darkness coming down there as well. Now, that one wants a bit of blending, that one, so that one's more of a shadow. You can see how it kind of follows the shape of the head there. And this one I can just, again, using a big chunk of water there, I want to soften all that in. There we go. So it starts to come around the sides. So you get that nice bit of shape there. Same on this side, obviously. A um, bit of grey. It's got a chunk missing from this ear. Let's bring that back in. And that's all nice and dark around. There's a big, big chunk of dark paint coming in. And again, down here, Pretty much all dark down that edge because that'll really separate the ear from the head. And then just using water again on this tissue, and I will give away this tissue as a giveaway. If someone can come up with the most creative name for this tiger, come on, let's see it in the comments. Someone will win this official used Matthew Palmer piece of kitchen paper. I'll sign it anything you want. Let's come up with the best name. Let's have a poll, shall we? Stick him in the comments. Keep it clean though. Lesser spotted tissue to put on. So, just as a quick look, folks, still getting people booking this thing. So we are getting down to the last last few spaces now. So if you do want to get in, now is a good time. Now's a good time. Let's just have a little look back at the palette um, here. Natural orange and um, dark skin was kind of what we used a little bit earlier, but a much more transparent wash of color. So that's quite a pale color. I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna glaze a few areas in the tiger's face around his nose, that kind of thing, because I wanna get a bit more shape into this. So I'm, it's a very transparent color. And it's gonna go in and start to give me a little bit of shape and form here. So these are what I would call um, sort of directional brush strokes and I can actually work, we'll get closer in here, and I can actually work over the top of the grey if I'm quick with my paint and I don't hang around too much, it won't lift off any of the colour. If it does lift off a little bit of colour, it's not a major issue really. It still, still works because it's given me extra texture and extra shape to this. I think so I'm sort of working around. See these sort of movement lines I'm adding to this thing here. So working very swiftly and quick and adding a little bit extra texture, even going in between some of the stripes on the top of the head there with this color. So it's basically, I'm using natural orange and I'm using um, dark 
uh, skin tone for this, okay? So if you've got any questions, I'll have a little, uh, I'll stick around at the end, folks, and please feel free to ask any questions, painting questions. Of course, every little helps, yeah? So we've got all that nice detail. Now highlights are going to come in this thing soon, which makes always makes a big difference when you start to bring highlights into your paintings. Every time, every single time. What a squeaky easel, can you hear it? So that nice bit of darkness is lovely down there. Makes more shape of that area. See these, these sort of directional brush strokes that really kind of curve in work really well. Bring a little bit of that into the ears as well. It's amazing how we started and of course the great thing about um, doing these sort of live things you can skip back on them you can watch them back again and you can see the beginning to end and it's amazing always amazes me how much paintings progress you know so it allows you to watch back right, you know, sort of right to the beginning. Pop in a few little, next little sort of spots and dots around some of these areas. Excellent. And bring a little bit of grey into that area. Nice. Okay, wonderful, folks. We have pretty much all of the colour up. In there, it's going to do a little bit below, so I'm going to come back a little bit. Not going to do a huge amount, um, really, because I don't want to be adding I don't want to be adding a huge amount. I'm just going to bring a little bit down here, and I'm going to bring a bit of shape and form into this area. So I'm using the same colour, which is the orange, and I'm just adding a few little random feathery edges very loosely painted so almost little sort of zigzag lines which I'm using plenty of water on to soften highlights are going to come soon which always makes such a big difference so this is all very incidental down here I want to keep that very misty and very loose down there so you get that nice kind of vignette effect and this is the orange mixed with the um, the dark skin tone put some little lines coming down there as well so I'm working over the top of that dark patch and smoothing it in a bit more wonderful I want to bring white into this very soon I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the grey and every so often if we get a little bit closer into that area I'm going to bring in some little bits of shadow can you see that nice bit of shadow it kind of gives a collar effect I'm just using grey for this some of these areas. Little little areas of fur squeaky easel. If I want to put any extra darkness in there I can do of course. Little bits of you know extra stripe coming in but it it's it's more kind of leading away from the main focal point super so again just 
adding water, softening it all in. I'm going to do another little bit of that on the opposite side actually. These are like little sort of blades of grass almost these. And then when I get the water on it and soften it in. Really being quite loose with the water and just skimming around. Excellent. So it starts to make it look more more solid. And that's using a combination of grey and various various things for that. It's it's not a bad idea to creep a little bit of darkness in. You can almost imagine a couple of sort of darker stripes coming in around some of these areas but I wouldn't add too much because there's lots of white long hairs around that area so I don't want to pop a huge amount in there so again folks at the end of this I'm going to put some light in which always makes a big difference which I'm sure you know if you've uh, watched me paint before And I'm going to get some light in the eye. I want to, I want to basically, I want to be um, removing some colour from this thing. And putting some light in. Adding a bit of texture here and there. That's looking pretty good. Folks, I'm just making these a little bit darker. So it gradually goes from the dark greys into slightly lighter greys, which is where the painting finishes, of course. Make sure these spots are quite dark, make sure the nose has got plenty of darkness and I keep going back into that and adding a little bit extra but like I say it's this the eyes nose mouth that's what's that's what's important really you need to get that darkness in there popping a bit of extra dark one down from the mouth excellent just had another two bookings for the workshop so again if you do want to have a go and you want to paint along you don't have to do it live because the link that gets sent to you you can use again and again and watch it back at any time which is what makes them very uh, very unique really Excellent. Okay, well that's looking pretty good, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with how he's, how he's kind of shaping up. How's he looking? Is he looking like a tiger? Yes, he's looking like a tiger. I just want to do a few extra little bits of, of light um, hairs, let's say. I'm going to bring a few coming down. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit closer for this, actually, because it's, it's, it's getting towards that, that little sort of final stages now, folks. And as always, every single time, it's the last bits that make the difference. So stick with us. Um, I'm going to bring in some quite loose, long hairs. If I zoom in close for a second to this, see I'm bringing these, these hairs come in really quite fluffy. Almost changing the shape a little bit here. Look, very spontaneous, like painting grass. Because it's quite soft, soft, long uh, fair around these areas, around the back of the ears as well. So, still using that number six brush. These are the imitation sable ones that we sell on watercolor TV. These are lovely brushes. So 
So just little flicks of, 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 of hair stuttering now. While we're close in folks, we're going to grab some tools for lightness. We've got some white paint here and this is natural white that I'm using here. Now white paint, in my opinion, is always best off used on a scrap piece of paper. Natural white is my, my opaque white basically. It is watercolour but you could use gouache or acrylic. Acrylic obviously you struggle to get the uh, to get it dry so just be a little bit cautious. Let's get close in and let's just take a little look at how we're going to use the white then. So into the water number six brush will be fine. We're going to pick up some of this strong white I'm going to roll it through the brush so we've got that nice kind of pointy white. Watch out for too much dilution when it comes to uh, white because it's dead easy to over... Look at that, if you stay too long in them eyes, they're going to a trance. Oh yeah, a little bit of highlight folks. Always makes a difference. I want to get as close as I possibly can to these eyes. That's a, that's that's a good shot. That come on, that's a good shot. Now what we're going to do here? I'm going to put a nice thick blob of white like that. Can you see that? I'm hoping you can. Let's get closer in. That's as close as I'm going to get to that. I think. Get a bit of white in there. Beautiful, beautiful. Works a treat. Now I mentioned using these uh, branch and detail brushes, these pointy ones. I want to use that now actually. I want to pop some, pop some white on that branch and detail brush. It's basically like a reservoir brush. So this, it's a rigger brush, but it's got it's got this natural hair that surrounds it, uh, this dark hair that basically means that you can use it for holding the paint, like an inkwell, I guess. I suppose in a in a, a strange sort of way. Now I always think a little bit of white just ever so lightly around the edge especially where that tear duct is a little bit of white there um, remember I'm really close into this so you're seeing lots of detail you're seeing the bits that you wouldn't want to show close up necessarily <laughs> so a few little bits of white around here around the eye it just makes more of a feature Okay, and if I come back a little tiny bit as well, there's some lovely uh, long white, almost whiskers that come from here. Okay, I'm just going to turn this on the side a second, folks, to make it easy to do that. Okay, so basically around here, there's some tall, you still see, yeah, some tall uh, white. Not whiskers, but you know what I mean, don't you? You know what I mean. And of course, the whiskers need to go in as well at the bottom. And while we're doing these kind of white flicks, if you look at the ears, there's a few white flicks in here. Like so. And of course, on this side as well. It's not a huge amount, there's a few little bits of white just coming. Just a touch. And just on, on a few of the edges. Let's come back a little bit further for you. Back around here. Just a few little bits of white. It's worth putting these in. You can almost um, pop them over the top of the over the top of the dark. A few a few grey hairs here and there. Nice. If we come down to the nose area and the mouth area, there's a little bit of white just along the top of the nose and a few little white highlights here and there. It just helps to give it a bit of a slightly, uh, not wet, but a slightly polished feel to it. I'm just 
refreshing the colour here, folks. Let's get close into this mouth, and what I want to do down here is I want to put some quite long white flicks coming down here. Over the top of that dark, can you see? Get those nice sort of tall hairs, long hairs, sorry not tall hairs. Like that, it just makes such a difference really. And of course the whiskers need to go in as well. Which, uh, there's not a huge amount of them. But they've come out from these areas and they just go in quite like this. All right, on this side as well. And they are very much white. So we've got plenty of darkness surrounding. So they're quite easy to put in. If your white starts to disappear, by the way, it means you've added too much water. So just bring a little bit of extra uh, white into play, which I'm just doing now myself actually, because it does, as you start to add water to the white, it it, it simply goes off, uh, it, just, it just goes too transparent, so you want it to be thick, of course. So I'm just making sure that these are quite strong. And at the same time, you can see the little bit of white I put in the nose there, but little flicks on these edges really make a difference. Every time. Like I said, it's always the last bits at the end that make the picture. And just randomly adding a few little extra bits of white around here. Let's come back a little bit. So we can see his, his head. There he is. So what I'm saying here, I don't have no idea, but I'm just <laughs> I'm just assuming. Putting little bits of little bits of white around. This is as I always call it, this is the spit and polish, yeah? Every painting has a spit and polish stage to it, and this is it on this picture. Put in some white individual hairs. Weaving its way through. Let's look nice and close in, folks. You can really see that white in action, can't you? And then a very steady zoom back. Got those gorgeous eyes. Let's take a look, close look at the eyes. The beautiful white in those eyes makes such a striking difference. It really does. Every single time. Let's come back a little bit steady on this, folks. And of course on a painting like this, it really would suit a nice signature. So that was me painting live, painting a tiger live. Folks, what I want to do is I want to get the board level so you can see him straight on because we do have a problem with leading cameras. If anyone's got any questions they'd like to ask me, folks, please do. I want to stay live for the next five or ten minutes. Please do ask them in the chat. I'll have a look at the chat in a minute. Um, and just to come back a little bit and have a little talk to you. Um, thank you for sticking around, folks. Um, people are starting to drift off now, so thank you. I just want to mention just briefly, we are literally down to the last couple of spots for this uh, virtual workshop, which you, if you're watching this back at a later stage, it was the 14th of June, but this is live, hello live from, from the UK. Um, we are uh, taking bookings for a virtual watercolour workshop 
which is on uh, Sunday the 14th. We do have a few spaces. If anybody is interested in booking any previous uh, workshops, these are them. These are all the pictures we've done. These are all available to book online. Head over to watercolor.tv. Click on the workshop tab. That was the sketch that we started with for the uh, tiger. And that's what we turned it into. So we've created a stunning uh, animal portrait. Something I'm very passionate about painting as well as landscapes. Thank you. Let's see if we've got any questions. We'll try and answer them live, folks. got a couple of questions coming in about using the colours. <laughs> I like the Little Britain quote. So yes, um, so in theory you could paint this picture just with primary colours. You could just use red, yellow and blue, um, which would be absolutely fine. Um, someone's talking about using a water spray. Water sprays for me aren't something I would, I would recommend using for my style of painting. Honestly, I think it puts too much water and it's too random it's way way too random so just watch out for using water sprays won't you okay that's something i wouldn't uh, always recommend um to be honest i'd be a little bit cautious about using water sprays so the brush i used for the whiskers was the uh, branch and detail brush there's a set of two available online and these are them so it's a Matthew Palmer branch in detail brush. It's a brush that's designed, it's a rigger brush on the inside, but it's surrounded by a, this is the small one, it's surrounded by a size eight brush. So it's like, it loads up with color and you can really get that nice detail in. folks well done you know that was a pleasure to paint that thoroughly enjoyed that one that was a nice bit of escapism yes you put some white on the ears if you look close you can see there's a little bit not not a huge amount just a touch just a little bit in there not a lot there's a few few little white flicks you can make it as white as you wanted to in the ears you could keep adding the white as much as you want to really personal preference how much you put in but just little sort of white um, hairs if you like I suppose you could say little white flicks put a few little spots of white around it's quite addictive when you start putting the white painting. Yes, you can watch and replay. So after the event's finished, give it about an hour to um, be uploaded, but you can watch this thing back at any time. Again, thank you to the moderators today. That's been a big, big bonus. Thanks to the patrons as well. That's always appreciated. If you're a patron, you can head, head on over to Patreon, uh, patreon.com and search my name. Yes, I can show you close up. That's a little zoom in close again. Yeah. 